In this film series, we look into five Celtic port towns that are connected and intertwined by the ferry routes that serve them. To get to know the landscape and the history, we hear from people in the know. We meet up with five local characters, musician Gary, trail runner David, wild swimmer Jackie, local artist Jana, and folk story enthusiast Hedith. We hear of their passion for heritage and how their love of the place they call home is shaping the future. Welcome to Ports Past and Present, Fishguard. A lot of the history is where we're standing. You can go to places where pirates landed. We were the last town in Britain to be invaded by pirates. We were the last town in Britain to be invaded by a continental army. It happened here on the spot where we're standing. It seems an odd thing to have in my pocket, but it came from a pirate ship, stayed on, on the end there and fired its cannon into the town with the idea of getting the town to pay them money. The town wouldn't. One of these cannonballs lodged in a chimney in one of the pubs in town. The locals borrowed a cannon from a ship which is in the harbour. They brought it up to this place here so they could fire down onto the pirates. And so the pirates immediately turned tail and went. Because of the pirate attack, the town asked the government for cannon. And those four big cannon over there were provided by the government for the town to protect it from pirates. So this is a very interesting place in terms of getting a handle on the town history. When I go to play music with my friends, I really enjoy the, the part of the evening where we have sea shanties. The shanties were there to give entertainment because in the days when these things were written down, there was no radio, no television and no record players. A lot of our history is entangled with that set of stories and songs that go with these sea shanties. Fishguard as a, as a town is part of what's called a peninsula culture. Peninsula cultures are where the peninsula has preserved the culture of the people who live on it. With Fishguard, that remained true in the sense that there was lots of folk music here. And as a consequence, we thought the best thing to do was uh, to try and have a once a year big festival where we could cope with all the, the numbers of people coming. We had a folk festival, the second uh, bank holiday of May, and it proved to be a smash success. And it's been going 20 years. I look out my window every day and I'm surrounded by inspiration. I'm quite close to the coastal path, so people walk past here all the time as well. And just whether it's the weather or the time of year or the people that are about, everything's always changing. There's always something that you can take inspiration from. In the whole last invasion history, our heroine, Jemima, she saw a lot of these drunken soldiers and went down with her pitchfork and she rounded them up, marched them back up this hill into Fishguard. And then when they surrendered, they actually took them back down to Goodick. On the bicentenary, Elizabeth Cramp was asked to design, make a commemorative tapestry. So she designed this and a whole army of local ladies did all this stitching and it depicts the whole thing from when they invaded right the way through to Jemima and then the treaty being signed at the Royal Oak 
So it's quite an important piece of local history that we're really proud of. Kumaraglois and it's just a really beautiful little bay and it's quite well known really for the church building that's only just left standing there's only one more left and that's St Brunach's Church. There was a big storm back in 1859 and loads of boats were lost out to sea and one of the boats was the Royal Charter which was lost off North Wales but lots of boats were also lost off the West Wales coast and the storm destroyed the church so the remains are here now. So it's just a really scenic place to come and swim. I'd heard about this group of people called the Blue Tits that were wild swimmers, but I was really nervous about finding out more about them because I just assumed they'd all be really fit and really fast swimmers. So the decision to start the swimming was something that I'd thought about for a long time but didn't really have the gut to actually initiate it. But when it did happen, it really has been life-changing. Here we are at the moment um, next to the field with the first flight to Ireland. It was achieved by uh, Dennis Corbett Wilson in 1912. So he ended up setting off here early morning and probably just going out towards the Priscilles there and hanging a left and then following you know, the ferry loop over to Rosslear and on to Ennis Corfe and crash landing and hitting a stone wall. Quite a celebrity thing to do back in the day. There's always been like a sense of like journeying in this area, people arriving and taking off to new destinations. I think what is special about the area of Fishguard is like geology of the place. It's nestled between Great Britain's only coastal national park and then on the backdrop inland of that you have the Gwine Valley which is an ancient glacial valley leading up to the Priscelli Hills. It's got this amazing kind of mix of land and sea. I'm looking to try and fuse running in the landscape and writing music. Kind of creating compositions, and I've been finding it interesting to also record the environment and recording like the River Gwine or further out to sea. Pan dechreus i adrodd streon shemi wad i blant yn y dosbarth, pa mor boblogydd we nhw, yn ein meddwl am un funud y byddai plant dydd i'r rein a diddordeb ac awydd i glywed, ond y gwir we, os oedd nhw'n gofyn am fwy o hyd o hyd, wel na ni, mae'r rhai bod nhw'n wych. Mae diddordeb da fi i greu adnoddau i weithio rhywbeth math o ddim pyd os gallai, dwi'n leid goel gael chi, er mwyn adrodd streon yr ardal, i blant lleol, oherwydd na i trwy'r tadaeth nhw, byth yn gas da fi i feddwl bod plant lleol yn gadael yr ysgol heb o bod am stori'r Frankwr a Jemima, am stori Dewi Sant, am stori'r Thales, y Llondrylliad, neu streon Shemiwad. Mae nhw gyd yn rhoi lliw i'n hardal ni ac yn rhoi hynaniaeth i ni'n byddai. It's part of your identity, chymwyd streon yr ardal the stories of the area. Ma trio roi rhyw syniad o hanes leol a chwedlu'r ardal a rhyw ymwybyddiaeth o'i gwreiddiau i blant yn yr ysgol yn bwysig i fi, dwi'n teimlo fe yn y galon.
I think once you've been brought up to that rhythm of the sea, you never lose it, it's in your blood. The tide comes and goes like it does here. Life, life's a bit like that, you get high tides. The magic of living by the sea is, makes you feel part of something bigger and port itself is a huge connection. Uh, so it's just always got this reminder of like things are happening all the time. Ma pobl i fe'n gafod gwein yn gwybod bod y porthlaf a'r llong ferri yn bwysig i'r gymuned o'r diwrnod cyntaf pan elw nhw'r ysgol uwchradd. Mae'r ysgol uwchradd lan ar y bryn yn wynebu y porthlaf ac maen nhw'n gweld y llong yn y mewn a mas, yn ddeddiol, yn fisiol, trwy'r tymhore, trwy'r blynyddau. Pride is definitely something you associate with the Welsh. It's really important to feel a part of where they live. You know, you hear a lot actually of the old community spirit. Well, it never died in Wales. That community spirit is alive and kicking, and especially in Fishguard and Goodick.